Hello everyone, today we're going to be diving into feng shui content and understanding your qua number as it relates to your home and surrounding environment. Armed with your personal qua number and guiding principles, you will have the ability to harness more positivity into your life, bringing greater happiness and success. After watching this video, you will be able to find the best directions for you to sleep, work, study, and simply thrive in. Are you ready to learn more about your qua number? Let's dive right in. Let's first start by discussing what is a Qua number. It is used to determine your four lucky corners, your auspicious corners, which is your lucky corners, and your inauspicious corners, which is your unlucky corners. We all have different energy needs and feng shui planning really teaches us to channel those energies in effective ways to get rid of negative vibes and increase all the positive vibes. According to feng shui, each person has four good directions and four bad directions based on your personal qua number. East and west grouping is used to indicate your best elements, best season, best color, and sometimes even your personality. What is the origin of your qua number? Your qua number is actually derived from the Eight Mansion School of Feng Shui, which is a derivative of the Compass School of Feng Shui, which is what I currently practice. Each direction in the Compass School has elements, colors, and symbols that are associated with it. These categories are subdivided into water, wood, earth, metal, and fire. These colors and elements are then used to help balance and harmonize a space. Each of these areas is called Gua in Chinese and coupled with Ba, which is eight, you have eight areas that are going to be dissected in this compass school. Therefore, the Ba Gua is subdivided into a grid with eight areas on the outer side of the grid and in the center of the grid is the heart of the home or the center of the space. The compass school is a term that's coined by Westerners to actually describe the patterns of chi. The patterns of chi is really how energy flows through your space. Any true form of feng shui practice should always involve a compass. Here's a little story about how the compass school of feng shui came to be. Chinese history books describe how around 2005 BC, a turtle emerged from the river Luo with nine numbers arranged in a grid on his back. The numbers were arranged in such a way that when they were added vertically, horizontally, or diagonally, they always added up to 15. This is referred to as the magic square. This magic square is part of the Bagua. The Compass School of Feng Shui superimposes the entire Bagua map onto the floor plan of our particular dwelling. Each of the outer eight squares relates to compass directions and the center square represents the center of your life or in this case, we're talking about your environment. It is a center of your home. Now, why is understanding your qua number important? Your personal qua number dictates the most auspicious and inauspicious directions in your life. If you were superimposing the Bagua map into your home, you are then able to determine which areas of the home that you should spend a little bit more time in and those areas of your home that is going to cause some sort of affliction or inauspicious bad luck energy. And those are the areas that you should stay away from. Knowing your personal qua number allows you to take full advantage of the directions in your home that support you and avoid the ones that don't. So here's how we calculate our personal qua number. All you need is the year of birth and your gender. You need to take the last two numbers of the year that you were born and then reduce them down to a single number. For example, if you were born in 1957, you would take the last two numbers, which is five and seven, you would add them together, five plus seven equals 12, and then you would further reduce this down to a single digit. One plus two equals three. Then depending on your gender, you would follow the next instructions. If you are a male, you would take that single digit and you subtract it from 10. So in this case, your qua number is three, three minus 10 equals seven. If you were born in 1957 and you are a male, your qua number would be seven. If you are a female and you were born in 1957, you would take the number three and you would add five to it. So three plus five equals eight. If you are a female born in 1957, your qua number would be eight. There are some special conditions that you should keep in mind. It's important to know that qua numbers follow the Chinese lunar calendar. Chinese lunar calendar is different from the Western solar calendar, which is the sun calendar, because it's actually a little bit later in the year. So for instance, January 1st is typically the start of the new year, but every year for the Chinese lunar calendar, it's different. Sometimes it falls at the end of January. Sometimes new year starts at the beginning of February, you really never can tell unless you're following a lunar calendar. So if you're born in January or February, you want to go online to double check in that year, what day did the lunar calendar start on? 
If you were born in February 1st of 2002, you'll know that the lunar calendar didn't actually start until February 12th of that year. So if you're born on February 1st, you would actually have to consider 2001 as your year of birth since you're kind of still in the previous year's calendar versus putting in 2002 to calculate your personal qual number. Another special condition is if you were born after the year 2000. Since 2000 is an entirely new century, we have new conditions to consider. If you are a male and you're born after the year 2000, you would subtract your single qual number from nine, not 10. If you're a female and born after the year 2000, you would add six to your qual number and not five. Now that you have your personal qual number, you can determine which sectors you fall in, the East group or the West group. East group qual numbers are one, three, four, and nine. West group qual numbers are two, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, now what? Now that you have your personal quad number, what do we even do with it? Understanding your personal quad number as it relates to feng shui is especially important when your house faces or sits in one of your auspicious directions. The house facing simply means where the front door is located. To accurately take a compass direction from your front door, you will stand inside your home, you'll open the front door, you'll stand with the compass, and whichever direction the compass is facing out in, that is the direction your front door faces. There are conditions in which your home faces one direction, but your front door may be askew. It could be faced in another direction. I always take the front door direction and not really where your home faces. Sometimes we have a front door that's kind of off to the side and garage doors that are kind of facing the street. I wouldn't take the compass direction from the garage door because that's not where you enter and exit out of the home from. I would take the compass direction from the front door, even though your house sits in in another direction. To me, that's the most accurate for taking compass directions, especially when you're trying to overlay the entire Bagua map onto your home. Another great way for you to use your qual number and to harness all of that positive chi is to make sure that your head or headboard is facing in the direction that is most auspicious for your personal qual number. You can harness better chi by sleeping with your head pointed in your success direction, or your bedroom can even be located in an auspicious corner of the home. Understanding your personal quad number can have so many advantages into your life. It could promote better sleep. You could have better luck in relationships. It can even provide more success when it comes to work and career. Okay, so now does everyone have their personal quad number in hand? I made this really handy dandy cheat sheet in a really easy to read grid. I want you to look for your quad number on top and follow it along down the column so that you could find the group that's best for you. You'll be able to find the group that you belong in, whether or not it's east or west, and find all of the elements that are used to determine your auspicious and inauspicious corners. So just as a really quick exercise, let's do this together. If you're looking at the chart on the very top row, you will find all of the personal qual numbers. This is listed in numerical order from one to nine. Now, if you look at the first column, you will see that the group is then subdivided into different elements. We've got water, earth, wood, metal, and fire. To find your best directions for wealth, for example. You'll look at the wealth column and then you'll follow it along to find your number. If your qual number is four, then your wealth corner is in the north sector of your home. If your qual number is one, then your wealth corner would be in the southeast sector of the home. Your health direction would be in the east sector of the home. Your best corner for relationships would be in the south sector of your home. The development corner is north and so on and so forth. The best energies that you can harness into your home have to do with success, love, personal growth and development. The worst directions in your home have to do with negative energy and bad luck. Now that you know your wealth direction, you wanna face this direction when you're working or when you're negotiating either with a bank or a contract or a client, when you're asking for a raise or other circumstances that impact the career sector of your life. For your love direction, think of love and relationships. You can place your bedroom in this sector, or you can face this direction when you wanna ask someone out on a date, when you're talking or spending time with your child. It's really all about relationships and communicating. Your health direction is all about promoting better health for your life. So of course this has to do with where you eat, where you sleep, what direction your head is pointed in, what direction you're actually facing. So you wanna cue in to your most auspicious health directions when you're seated at the dining table or when you're sleeping at night. 
Your personal growth direction is really advantageous for pretty much every facet of your life. This is a really important direction for you to keep in mind, especially if you're studying and you wanna ace your test. You wanna make sure that not only is your desk facing your auspicious direction, but also your head is pointed in the auspicious direction as well. You also wanna keep in mind your best colors and the favorite directions that they correspond with. Keep in mind that the Southern Hemisphere Bakwa map is a mirror image of the Northern Hemisphere. Of course, compass directions don't change, but the elements will. Instead of the Northeast sector being your knowledge and self-cultivation corner, it would be the wealth and abundance corner. Instead of your North sector being the career and life path, in this case, it would be your fame, reputation, and recognition corner. And of course, that applies to all of the Northwest, North, Northeast corners and the Southwest, South, Southeast corners. In this case, you want to use the colors assigned to the compass direction that rules your four best directions. You might want to amplify that certain corner with those colors. You might want to wear those colors on your body or even decorate with those colors using artwork and accessories. Now, how does your personal quad number relate to the feng shui of your home? Let's start dissecting all of the different sectors of the home and how it relates to your personal quad number. The center of the home is all about the earth element. The earth element also governs the northeast and southwest sectors of your home. If you want to amplify this sector, you can add more neutrals to the space or decorate with natural elements like crystals, geodes, pottery, and ceramic. If we move on down to the south corner, the fire element rules the south sector. Fire elements are all about bright light, Lights, reds, oranges, yellows. You can also add candles here as well. The metal element governs the west and northwest sectors. You can decorate in colors of white and silvers. You can add metal sculptures and home decor. The wood element rules the east and southeast sectors. Wood is really all encompassing. Think plants, think actual wood materials. You can even have a wood slat wall on that side of the home. Wood colors align with nature. Think greens and browns. The water element governs the north sector and this sector is all about blues and black. You can place an indoor fountain here. You can also place artwork and murals that depict an ocean or some sort of landscape with water in it. I want you to get really creative in terms of furniture, materials, finishes, and accessories that you bring into the space. Think in terms of color, think in terms of actual finishes that align with a certain element on the Bagua map. You don't have to overlay the Bagua map onto your entire grid of your home. You can also superimpose the entire Bagua grid onto a specific room in the home and not the entire home. Home. That type of feng shui practice is up to you to determine. You understand feng shui a little bit better now. You have your quad number in hand. Let's talk about case studies. Once we sat down with the team, they had so many questions when it came to their personal quad number and how that relates to the feng shui of their home. We've got Audrey stepping in with some personal questions and I can't wait to help her out. We have a very special guest. We've got Audrey. Audrey is Team J Kid. We started talking about your personal quad number and how it relates to feng shui in the home. And Audrey actually has a condition that is very common. She lives with other people. So what's going on in this house? In my house, I have six people living in the house and it's very crowded. Our house isn't that big. So we have to share a lot of spaces and it's hard to figure out um, where everyone can sleep and where everyone can hang out with in the common areas. So my biggest condition is that my grandparents live on the first level mm -hmm. in the bedroom on the bottom and there's only one bedroom and they have health conditions where they can't really go upstairs or anything and they can only roam around in certain common areas of the home due to their health and everything mm -hmm. too. So my question is if their room is my lucky direction for my quad number, what should I do? because they obviously can't go upstairs and we can't switch rooms. So how do I compromise with them? Mm -hmm. And how do I figure out a solution for that? Okay, I love this question because I know that a lot of us face the exact same conditions in our home. We have an auspicious direction. We found what our quad number is. Let's say, what is your quad number? Mine's six. Yours six. And so six falls in the west side, mm -hmm. right? So the west lucky auspicious direction, let's say your grandparents are now cohabiting that west sector. So how can you harness better energy for yourself and better energy for your grandparents as well, right? Let's backtrack here. You have six people living in the house. Your furniture is all set up. Everyone is already in their respective rooms in the home. You don't wanna change rooms according to everyone's 
auspicious directions. Is that correct? Yes. So you want to work with what you have. Now, how do you work with what you have? This is what you do. You figure out everyone's qual numbers, right? Yours is west. Let's say your grandparents is actually east, but the room that they're sleeping in is west. What you can do immediately without having to do any structural changes is simply move their headboard or their bed frame and redirect it in the direction that is most auspicious for them. So even though the room is located on the west sector of the home, you could easily in that room using a compass to figure out which direction is east and move their headboard in that direction. You also have another condition, of course, with command positions in the bedroom. You only have so many walls to work with, and that's also very common. You have to work with what you have and do the best you can. No one is ever going to have perfect feng shui in the home, and of course, your needs change over time. So now that we kind of have the bedroom out of the way, you could actually do the same thing in your bedroom, Audrey. Let's say your bedroom is now in the east sector of the home, but your best direction is west, right? So go into your bedroom, open up the compass, figure out where the west direction is, and then move your headboard to that west direction. If you cannot do that, then I wouldn't worry too much about where you're sleeping, but let's talk about where you're eating. Let's say you have a dining room. So the dining room has a dining table. It's got chairs surrounding the dining table. You know that your best direction is west. You don't have to sit on that east side of the dining table. Always stay on the west side of the dining table and you're facing that direction. You could be eating in that direction. It's going to bring you better, greater, energy. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. And of course, you know, you can also clue in to your grandparents um, individually, their best health directions, mm -hmm. and then determine the best areas for them to kind of move around to, even on the first floor. So of course, we know that they have health conditions. We want to be able to help, you know, promote greater energy for them. So in order to tap into their better health directions, you might be able to like move a chair, like a lounge chair into their favorite corner. And of course, they can still like eat, sleep, relax, watch TV in the areas that they always hang out in. Sweet. So I have another question. Okay. Since your qual number is your personal direction, um, does it affect you outside of the home as well or just inside the home? Okay, that's an excellent question, and it does. You know, your qual number, you have to remember this number, okay? Because this number actually translates to both inside and outside of the home. You just have to imagine that feng shui is all about energy, right? So you have energy for yourself, like animate objects, but inanimate objects like your surroundings, the furniture, your home, anything that's happening outside of your house also affects all of the energy that it comes into contact with. So your personal qual number could also relate to work if you work outside of the home. Let's say you work in an open concept office environment where you walk into an office and there's just like open cubicles. You know what your qual number is. You know what your auspicious direction is. You're not facing that auspicious direction. It's really easy for you to kind of figure out what the auspicious direction is and find either an open cubicle or someone who's willing to trade. You might be falling behind in work or school. You're easily distracted. You're unproductive. That is an indication that that something needs to change and it could be just as simple as you changing the direction that you're facing i mean to me it's like wow here's a solution let's just try it that's the beauty of feng shui it's called a practice for a reason there are so many ways for you to implement your practice and find great solutions that can work for you down the line oh i thought of one more question so okay. you know your own personal qual number mm -hmm. how has that helped you personally in the home okay this this is a loaded question. I do know my own personal quant number without revealing the year that I was born. My quant number is actually four. In feng shui, in Chinese, you know, culture, four, the number four sounds like death. So four is actually an unlucky number according to feng shui and quant numbers. But for me, I look at death like a rebirth. Okay, so when my husband and I were looking for our first home, we looked for homes that aligned with my auspicious direction. So I knew that my auspicious wealth and health direction was south facing. So when I bought our first home, it hit a few check marks, namely one of it being a south facing home. I checked that off. I looked at the address and I reduced the numbers down to a single digit and the single digit aligned with my qua number. I mean, if that is not fate, I don't know what is, but beyond that, I was able to take that qual number and understand what my inauspicious directions were. So inauspicious direction for me is west. 
auspicious direction for my husband is west. So it's bad luck for me, it's good luck for him. I placed his office in the west sector of our home. Good luck for me is east, I placed my office in the east sector of our home. So even though we're kind of opposite, that actually benefits us in the house because I can place him in one sector of the house, one wing of the house, for him to do all of his best work. He works there, he eats in that direction. I mean, clearly we sleep together, but he kind of faces that direction. I face another direction. So it's really important for me to stay in line with all of my auspicious directions when I'm eating, sleeping, working, and that helps me avoid the negative areas in our home. So one of my negative areas in the home is the northeast sector of our home. The northeast sector of our home, originally, I was actually going to put my office there. And then I started diving more into feng shui, more into quan numbers. I sat down with my feng shui master at that time and he was like, you need to avoid the northeast sector as much as you can. Don't spend a whole lot of time in there. And I thought, hey, I need another room. What am I going to put in that room that I don't spend a whole lot of time in? And that is how we have my walk-in closet, people. <laughs> I don't sleep there. The closet it is on the other wing of the house but it really makes sense to me because that is a bad direction for me anyways so you always want to clue into the best directions this is where you're going to eat sleep work and then your inauspicious directions where you could place something like a bathroom or a kitchen where fire in your toilet is already suppressed by all of the negative energy that's in your inauspicious direction there are so many other ways but that's like a whole another video and i don't think we have time for that today so thank you so much audrey for sitting in for this portion i'm so happy that i was able to help you find a solution that you can implement right now when you get home Thank you, Julie. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely do that when I get home. Ah, you're welcome, Eddie. <laughs> That's it for today's video. I hope you had a fun time exploring more feng shui concepts and understanding your qual number. How can your personal qual number help you become happier, richer, or more in love than you've ever been in your life before? Well, really, it can't. Knowing the number holds no power, just like understanding basic feng shui principles isn't going to help you become more productive in life. After watching this video, I want you to calculate your quad number and tell me what it is in the comments below. Are you in the East group or the West group? Then I want you to tell me one thing that you could do in your home right now that is going to help you amplify all of those lucky corners in your home. What questions can I help you answer when it comes to understanding your quad number and feng shui as it relates to your home and life? If you like this type of content and you want more feng shui tips and interior design inspiration, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I'll see you next week.